Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about alendronate. What is this drug alendronate? The suffix dronate indicates this drug is in biphosphonate. We have few other drugs with similar suffix within this category such as risidronate, ibandronate, etidronate. All these drugs are biphosphonates and they are particularly used to treat osteoporosis. So these drugs mainly affect the bone demineralization. From the bones minerals like calcium as well as phosphate can be removed which reduce the strength of the bone and increase risk of fractures. So this resorption of the bone is one of the important reason for osteoporosis. Now biphosphonates are going to inhibit this resorption of the bone thereby they improve the bone density and reduce the risk of fractures in the patients. So today in this video we are going to discuss about this alendronate, how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, drug interactions, contraindications, side effects and clinical use of this drug we will discuss in this video. So now this alendronate is useful in the treatment of osteoporosis. So this drug is indicated for osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. In the postmenopausal women, the estrogen levels are reduced, which results in the demineralization of the bone, resulting in the decreased bone density and increased fragility. That's why this drug is useful both in the treatment as well as prevention of osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. Not only in the women, this drug can also be prescribed in the men with osteoporosis. So, alendronate is indicated for osteoporosis in the men with increased bone mass. Again, in such situations, the increased bone mass increases the risk of fractures in the bones, which is prevented by alendronate. Similarly, if you have the drugs like glucocorticoids, can reduce the bone density, so they can produce osteoporosis in the patients due to increased resorption of the bone. So alendronate can be used in the treatment of osteoporosis induced by glucocorticoids. In all these, alendronate is particularly used to treat osteoporosis where it is going to inhibit the resorption of the bone, thereby it improves the bone density and decrease the risk of fractures in the patients. This drug can also be used in the treatment of Pazet's disease, which is a disorder of bone remodeling so due to improper recycling, the normal bone is replaced by a old bone resulting in the decreased bone strength and increased risk of fractures. So in all these conditions, alendronate can be used. What is the chemical nature of this drug? So alendronate is a biphosphonate. So this is the structure of alendronate. So this is saying the two phosphate groups attached by a single carbon. So this is the biphosphonic acid. In the salt form, they can exist as biphosphonate. So the suffix of the name is the biphosphonic acid and now this biphosphonic acid is having a alkyl chain. Let us give the numbering. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now here 4 carbon chain is going to be attached. So we can write this as butylidine. This butylidine is having first position hydroxy and fourth position amino group. So we can write this as 4 amino 1 hydroxy. So that is the name of alendronate. Now let us see how this drug acts. Alendronate mainly shows its inhibitory activity on osteoclast formation. Osteoclast results in the bone resorption. So we have discussed that alendronate inhibits the bone resorption by inhibiting the osteoclast activity. But they have very less significant activity on the osteoblast. Practically they mainly affect the osteoclast activity without any significant activity on the osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are mainly responsible for bone formation. So alendronate mainly inhibits the bone resorption with very less effect on bone formation. But whenever this bone resorption is going to be inhibited on long term, they can also improve the bone formation and osteoblast activity. So osteoblasts are the cells which can release one of the important mediator that is the RAN-KL. This is the ligand for the receptors RANK receptor actuator of nuclear factor kappa b for this receptor one of the ligand is the rank ligand which is indicated by rank l this rank ligand released from the osteoblast can act on few of the cells these are the osteoclast progenitor cells these cells express one of the receptor that is the rank receptor 
Now on this rank, this rank ligand can bind so that this osteoclast progenitor cells are activated and they are converted into another form with more number of nuclei within the cell. So this is a multinucleated osteoclast cells. And finally, they can be converted into matured osteoclast cells. Now these are the osteoclasts which can produce a bone resorption. They release one of the enzyme collagenase. This produces the dissolution of the bone mass resulting in the loss of bone. And they can also affect the hydroxy appetite. This hydroxy appetite is going to be dissolved by HCl, hydrochloric acid. Now in presence of HCl, this hydroxy appetite is going to be converted into calcium as well as phosphate ions. Now these minerals are free and they can be transported into the systemic circulation. So in this way, bone is going to be demineralized by the formation of osteoclasts, which reduce the bone strength and increase the risk of fractures in the patients. Now here, alendronate is one of the drug which acts as anti-resorptive agent. This drug is selectively accumulated in the osteoclast cells and it inhibits their activity and it also inhibits the dissolution of hydroxy appetite to release calcium as well as phosphate ions. In this way, this drug is going to inhibit the release of minerals from the bones which improves the bone strength on long term treatment. But since alendronate is going to be incorporated within the bone mass, continuous administration of alendronate is required in order to produce anti-resorptive activity. Now let us see the precautions of this alendronate. One of the important precautions of alendronate is that this drug can produce the irritation of upper gastrointestinal mucosa. So when this GA mucosa is going to be irritated, it produces the reflux action, which produces the esophageal reflux resulting in the various conditions in the patients such as gastritis, dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing, duodenitis, inflammation of the duodenum, esophageal ulcers because of the reflux of acid into the esophagus and erosions in the esophagus as well as perforations. Even it produces one of the important symptoms heartburn because of the gastroesophageal reflux. And finally, it can produce a condition like Barrett's esophagus where there is esophageal reflux along with difficulty in swallowing in the patients. All this can be observed with alendronate because of irritation of gastrointestinal mucosa. That's why this drug should be taken in upright position, which minimizes the esophageal reflex. And this drug should be taken with full glass of water, which again reduces the reflex as well as irritation within the esophagus. So these two are important precautions that should be followed when this alendronate is going to be prescribed. And at least 30 minutes upright position should be maintained of gastrointestinal side effects. Similarly, alendronate can produce hypocalcemia because this drug is having anti-resorptive activity. It reduces the calcium release from the bones, thereby reduce the calcium levels within the blood, resulting in the hypocalcemia. And this hypocalcemia is more pronounced in the patients who are having the Pazard's disease or vitamin D deficiency or few of the drugs like glucocorticoids. All these conditions can further increase the hypocalcemia produced by alendronate. Due to this hypocalcemia, the patients may observe few of the muscle disorders like muscle spasms, muscle cramps, some numbness, tingling sensation, brittle nails because of lack of calcium. Not only on the bones as well as nails, they can also affect central nervous system. This hypocalcemia can produce some hallucinations, confusion and loss of memory in the patients. So any of these symptoms are observed by use of this alendronate then the serum calcium level should be checked thoroughly and if required calcium supplement should be given in order to restore the calcium levels within the serum. Similarly, this drug can produce musculoskeletal pain. So some bone pain, joint pain as well as muscle pain can be observed with this alendronate and particularly these musculoskeletal pains are more observed in the postmenopausal women who are treated for osteoporosis with this alendronate. Another important precaution of alendronate is the osteonecrosis of jaw. This drug can produce some loosening of the teeth, swelling of mouth, delayed healing after tooth extraction and increased risk of infections. All these effects are observed with alendronate 
and particularly these side effects are observed with this alendronate when this drug is given to the patients after invasive dental extraction. After the dental extraction, there should be some rapid healing, but because of this alendronate, there is a decreased healing as well as loosening of the teeth and swelling of the mouth and there may be increased risk of infections. And sometimes this osteonecrosis of jaw can also be observed in the patients who are having anemia or poor oral hygiene or patients with cancer. In such situations, again osteonecrosis is more pronounced with alendronate. Another important precaution is that alendronate can also increase the atypical femoral fractures. Even this drug is used for osteoporosis, but it can produce the atypical fractures. These are the fractures produced in the bones without any significant trauma or physical damage, particularly femur shaft as well as femur diaphysis are more affected by this alendronate. So these bone areas can be affected without any significant trauma in the patients. So alendronate can produce thigh pain as well as groin pain in the patients. Glucocorticoids when they are given with alendronate, they can further increase the atypical femoral fractures. So care should be taken when our glucocorticoids are combined with this alendronate. Now let us see the drug interactions of this alendronate. Whenever this alendronate is administered, the absorption of this drug can be affected by calcium. Normally alendronate shows some absorption through the GI tract, but in presence of calcium, the absorption is somewhat reduced. This calcium may be present in the antacids, otherwise in the calcium salts. Now calcium can form a complex with this alendronate and this combination is non-absorbable. So in presence of calcium, the absorption of alendronate is somewhat reduced. That's why a 90 minutes interval should be maintained. So within this 90 minute interval, alendronate can be absorbed into the systemic circulation. So we can avoid this significant drug interaction between alendronate and calcium salts. And the interaction is observed with aspirin and alendronate. Aspirin is one of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and it is also used as anti-platelet agent. This drug is going to inhibit the Cox pathway, thereby it inhibits the sense of thromboxane A2. And because of this action, aspirin is used as anti-platelet agent. But because of the same mechanism, aspirin can increase the upper gastrointestinal bleeding. So alendronate which produces gastric reflux. This drug can further increase the upper GI bleeding. So this combination increases risk of GI bleeding. And particularly this interaction is observed when this alendronate is used at a dose greater than 10 mg. Not only with the aspirin, other anesthetics can also affect this upper GI bleeding when they are given with alendronate. What are the contraindications? We have seen that alendronate can increase the upper GI mucosal irritation. So this drug is contraindicated in esophageal disorders such as delayed esophageal emptying and achalasia, decreased neuronal stimulation to the esophagus and in the patients with risk of aspiration, In all these conditions, alendronate can further increase the esophageal reflex. Similarly, in the patients who cannot sit upright for at least 30 minutes, this drug is not preferred and contraindicated because it increases the risk of esophageal ulceration as well as reflex. Similarly, this drug can produce hypocalcemia. So in such patients, this drug is contraindicated and it can also increase the hypersensitive reactions. Again, in such conditions, this drug is contraindicated. What are the side effects? The important side effects are mainly related with gastrointestinal system. It can produce some abdominal pain, nausea, dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing, flatulence, heartburn due to reflux of gastric acid, gastritis, myalgia, muscle pains, arthralgia, joint pains, some central effects like headache, dizziness, vertigo can be observed. And it can also produce hypersensitive reactions like skin rashes. All these are the important side effects of alendronate. How it is given? This drug is available as tablet as well as oral solution. At different strengths it is available. And the dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication. For the treatment of osteoporosis, 70 mg once weekly. Otherwise, it can be divided as once daily preparation 
so it is given as 10 mg once daily so when this 10 mg is given for 7 days the net effective dose is 70 mg per week so it can be given either weekly basis or daily basis in weekly basis it is given at 70 mg daily basis it is given at 10 mg for prevention of osteoporosis the dose is somewhat reduced to half of the dose so it is given at 35 mg once weekly otherwise 5 mg once daily similarly for treatment of glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis the dose of the drug is 5 mg once daily but in some patient this dose may be increased to 10 mg once daily similarly for the treatment of pazet's disease alendronate is given at 40 mg once daily and the treatment is extended up to 6 months so that's about this alendronate alendronate is a biphosphonate which mainly inhibits the bone resorption this drug is selectively accumulated within the osteoclast where it is going to inhibit the osteoclast activity and inhibit the dissolution of hydroxy appetite thereby it inhibits the release of minerals like calcium as well as phosphate so this drug mainly produces anti resorptive activity but since this drug is going to be incorporated within the bone mass this drug should be continuously administrated in order to produce anti resorptive activity one of the important precaution of this drug is irritation of gastric mucosa particularly upper gi mucosa is more affected resulting in the esophageal reflex ulceration perforation and it can also increase the dysphagia gastritis esophagitis so care should be taken to minimize this gastroesophageal reflex and the patient should take this drug with upright position for at least 30 minutes after administration of this drug and this drug should be taken with full glass of water in order to minimize the reflux of this drug and alendronate can also increase the osteonecrosis of the jaw resulting in swelling of the mouth and loosening of the teeth so during the dental extraction this drug should be stopped in order to avoid teeth abnormalities and hypocalcium is another important precaution that should be monitored when this alendronate is used for long term period the dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication for the treatment of osteoporosis both in the men as well as women the initial dose is 70 mg given once weekly otherwise it is given as daily basis at a dose of 10 mg once daily for prevention of osteoporosis it is given at 35 mg once weekly otherwise 5 mg once daily similarly for glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis this drug is given as 5 mg once daily which may be increased to 10 mg once daily based on the patient's condition and for the treatment of pazet's disease this drug is given at 40 mg once daily and it is prescribed for 6 months of the treatment so that's about this alendronate hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video.